Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of mine. This time we are back with Wandi Good Day. It's finally here. I am so excited. I, like I said, I said everything there was to say at the ending of last episode. I just want for Dr. Wandi to accept our nice Yo Yak's love and for him to finally allow him to kiss him on the lips. Because apparently that's a big deal for Dr. Wandi, and that's why he's not allowing Yoyak to actually kiss him on the lip. But that's like the only thing I'm mostly excited for, for Dr. Wandi to finally just say, okay, you're allowed to kiss me on the lips. But we will see. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe. For the full uncut reaction, you can check out my Patreon. The link is in my description box below. And without further ado, let's start. Is that like a continuation of the bad back flashes that he had? <laughs> Hold up! <laughs> That's Yo Yak! <laughs> he won in the game and he lost in real life. Now that story, come on, God! No, stop! Hold up! No! Hold! No! Last episode, in the very beginning, Dr. Wandi asked Yo Yak if he was more like his mom and he immediately reacted defensively about that. So like those moments where Dr. Wandi was like lost in thought and Dr. Yo Yak like grabbed his hand to bring him back to reality. That's how Dr. Wandi's parents died. But we never knew what happened to Yo Yak's mother. We knew he was kind of defensive about the topic but we didn't know what happened, so I was like, maybe it's a sensitive topic for him. And now we saw what happened to the mom. Apparently, I don't know, maybe she had heart failure or something. And she was brought to the hospital in order to, like, save her. But it was too late and she died there. Oh, God. Now, before I continue, in general... When you have those moments of backflashes, this is like a trauma. This is a traumatic experience for someone, especially if you like love your mom more than anything, you know? Like there are a lot of things that you can love in the course of your life, but you like prioritize some people. And like your parents are like one of the most important people in your life. So if you actually see your mom die, or like you just see your mom dead, in front of you, it's like a traumatic experience for you. And the normal reaction of a human is like you accept that the person isn't there anymore, but it's still traumatic. You like push that down. And the only moment where you actually have those moments of trauma over there, where you like dream of that traumatic experience, or you have backflashes where you are being brought back to one of the most horrible moments of your life, like for him, seeing his mother dead in front of him. That only happens when you witnessed in the present something that reminds you of that moment back in the day. Whether it's like the moment, as in seeing someone being this close of like losing their balance perhaps, or the feelings that you felt back in the day. When you are in the now, and you feel something that reminds you remotely of how you felt back in the day when you were witnessing that traumatic experience that is still traumatizing you. That's when you dream in the now. That's when you are being brought back to that horrible moment. That's when that traumatic experience keeps on popping up in front of your face. Because this is like your brain trying to force you to kind of come to terms with what happened. Because when you're traumatized, you're not actually dealing with that pain. You're not, like just trying to push it under the rug because you're like, this is too painful, I can work with this. You kind of try to get used to the fact that that person isn't there anymore. And that's like a certain part of the pain of grieving. But this isn't the only pain that you have to get rid of, you know? There is also a kind of trauma inside of you that you need to deal with and when you don't do that and something in the present reminds you of the pain that you felt back in the day you keep on having those backflashes like yoyak is having right
He's reliving one of the most powerful moments of his life. I feel so bad. No. Well, I'll do something, sir, if you see that. If you don't want to hug him, then wake him up. Not him actually, like, listening to him, knowing he's in pain. Son. Oh, stop. Okay. Uh, you know that kind of pain, huh? Because he lost his parents. So he would know what this man is going through. And he's kind of trying to comfort him, being like, yeah, don't worry, I'm here. It can be comforting. Because when you are in that trauma, you're kind of still awake, you know? Like, this kind of sobers you up, in a certain sense, if you know what I mean. Mm. Of course he's awake. When you are reliving something traumatic, it's kind of, in a certain sense, like a nightmare. Even if it happened in real life. Like, a nightmare is like something you just imagine. Like, it's not something that actually happened. And when you have a certain type of nightmare, the only thing you want to do is wake up. This is like when your brain is, like, working insanely fast. Your heart is pumping. You're starting to sweat. This is because you don't want to relive that. It's too painful. And if you actually manage to fall asleep, even though you're kind of in that traumatic moment, and you are sleeping, the first thing that your body does, it's like trying to wake you up. You automatically wake up. It's like takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds maybe, but you are fidgeting when you're in your sleep because you don't want to see it. You want to wake up. You're like, the second I wake up, all those horrible moments will be gone. Even though you kind of still are a little traumatized by that or like shaken of the pictures you saw. But the second you wake up, you like know that what you saw isn't real. Like it's not what's actually happening. Because a nightmare like this, especially a traumatic nightmare, where you actually just see the past repeating itself in front of you, it hits even more. And when you see that, you immediately want to wake up. So you automatically fidget so much that you automatically wake up because you don't want to see those pictures anymore. You could have stayed in his arms. I'm pretty sure he needed a hug. I'm sad. I like this. This is kind of like the cute synchronicity, you know? He wants to hug him so badly. That's kind of like what you do when you yourself have experienced a similar pain. I mean, they both are kind of like aware of how it feels like to lose your parent. And when you are aware of how it feels like, you become sensitive to that kind of pain. And you don't want anyone else to feel like that. So you immediately become soft when it comes to that topic. Why are we seeing him? What is wrong with this man? You said you don't like men? Chira. Like I said, he don't like that he ain't that special no more. I think this is so funny. Oh. Are you hurt? He don't like you like that? You hurt that he ain't that special? Are you that upset? What? Y'all, this is actually so funny to me. Why the fuck is this man so upset about the fact? Why is he so upset? If he doesn't actually like him, he shouldn't actually be upset about the fact that D is not interested in him anymore. He should actually feel happy. Like, he's not clinging to me anymore. I told him I don't like him. So actually, in general, as a decent person, he should be happy that this man is like trying to move on. Because in general, like, if you don't reciprocate the feelings and then you're making a big deal out of this, it's making the atmosphere between the two of you insanely awkward. And he made it a huge-ass deal. Not just him, but also Dr. Wandi. Because he asked three times why he don't like him. So they both kind of made a huge deal out of this. And about him not liking him because he says he likes women. And uh, Dr. D not being capable to accept that. Dr. T should actually be happy. He should be happy that this man is capable to move on because as a decent person, you're like, I don't reciprocate his feelings, but he's pretending that he sees Dr. D still as a friend, okay? Even though they're being at each other's throats because of the scholarship, but we're gonna ignore that. 
He keeps on saying he sees him as a friend. So as a good friend, you should be happy that your friend is trying to move on and that he finally is capable to do that with someone that truly appreciates him. I mean, we want to believe that when we get into a relationship with someone that they love us and that they appreciate us. I mean, there are toxic relationships or like what they are, like fake boyfriends or like friends with benefits, but that's none of Dr. Ter's business, right? Right now, he knows that he has a boyfriend. Shouldn't he be happy? He's all that upset. Why are you that upset, sir? Like, I kept on teasing Dr. Ter because of the way he behaved, but is that actually a thing? Is he that upset about the fact that he knows that he ain't that special? I would try to move on from Dr. Ter as well if he would be behaving like this. First off, not just rejecting me, but then also like trying to make all those huge decisions without me. He actually tried to be like, yeah, Dr. Wandi is not interested in the scholarship, just me. We talked about this over dinner. No. Dr. Wandi confessed to him, he said he don't like him, and then he was like, about the scholarship, leave it to me. And then he himself, it wasn't Dr. Wandi saying something, Dr. Turb was about to be like, yeah, Dr. Wandi doesn't want the scholarship. He also decided to make like decisions for him. Like, this is toxic. This is trash. Now he's upset that he's like, has a boyfriend. Why are you that upset? Why are you that interested? Why are you that much in this man's business? Leave him be. You ain't that special one more. People can't move on. Tommy fan. Tommy fan so. I'm with him? That? As a decent friend. As a good friend, as a good person, shouldn't you be happy for him? He says he has a boyfriend, be happy. You upset? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not a lie. It's not a lie, he slept in his room. Wink at him while you're at it, goodbye, bitch. You don't like the fact? Yes, they do. He, he is not having it. He's not having the relationship. But why, sis? Y'all, this is like a toxic person. He's a toxic person. Instead of being happy that he's not hanging on to him while he's like, he don't have feelings for him. He's being upset that he found someone new. <laughs> why are you so upset, sis? Okay, man. Sure, I can. Mom, I don't feel anything. Sir, shut up. We know you lying. I'm your yak. Tag yourself. So many tags here. He actually used to give him food. Dr. D! He's so cute! Only know you love her when you let her go. <laughs> I don't get what's going on in this man's <laughs> mind. Is he upset that he's <laughs> not showing him the same <laughs> love that he <laughs> used to when he was <laughs> only <laughs> obsessed with him? <laughs> he does. <laughs> Yes. Oh, both of them are in denial. มาสะกดแบบนี้เนาะไม่ได้ถึงแค่เป็นห่วงกลัวว่าจะมีคนไปเมาท์นอนร้องไห้อยู่ข้างกองขยะอีกขี้เกียจไปแบกครับแต่
like I feel bad, they're kind of in the same situation. Both of them are still hung up on their ex or more like on the person that they like. The person that they like don't like them like that. They only make them suffer kind of psychologically and they're using each other as collateral damage. Because they are not committed to be in a relationship with each other because they're still hung up on the other person. But they want to feel the love that they give to the person who doesn't like to give it back. This is so sad. And it's just so realistic. I used to know. Tell him that he's changing. Tell him that he's changing. He about to die. Yeah, you feel romantic. <laughs> are you getting a hard on? Because it feels like you are. ขอพักก่อนนะโค้ดไม่ไหวแล้วอ่ะโค้ดไปเลยอ่ะหน้าแดงๆไม่สบาย <laughs> <laughs> He's in love. <laughs> That's a different thing. Yeah, he's blushing. Have he keeps on pretending that he doesn't care about him and he can actually see it. He's invested in this man. The closer he gets to her, the more he gets mad. Sir, she has a thing with Om. And he's starting to note. Yeah, Om. He noticed. Mm hmm. And she thinks there's something going on between them because he has the necklace. No, but she has a thing with him. And Yoyak is noticing it. And he's not having it either. Okay. What I don't like is what they're doing again. I said it so many times. I don't remember which series I was saying that, but I think I also said it in a few Let's Plays of mine. I hate when people think that they have to change in order to like get the person that they're into. If you actually have to change yourself, whether it's your style, your personality, or just, I don't know, where you're obsessed with a person that much that you think that you have to go through plastic surgery to look differently as in literally not just clothing style but also like your face just in order to get the person that you're interested in then they are not worth it because you are beautiful the way you are and we are people and not robots for a reason because we're all different we all have something different that we can bring into the world or into a person's life or into a friend group or in general to life we all contribute something different to life because of the way we grow up because of our personality because of the energy we give out so everyone has something different and you shouldn't have to change yourself in order to get the person you like because sooner or later it will still not work out between you and that person if you have to change yourself in order to catch their attention because it's not who you truly are you aren't confident you're more shy and if you try to be like fake it till you make it it's not gonna work on the long run because you are shy and it's not something you can change and it's not something that you should change being shy and cute is like also a person that someone can fall in love with like everyone has different tastes and if the person that you like doesn't like shy and awkward then that person is not worthy of your time, dot. You don't have to change yourself. And it's the fact that he's like, I'm gonna shoot my shot. And the fact that he like says, yeah, please, Dr. Wandy, please help me change my style in order for me to could like match this man. You won't. And she will still choose him because if they seem to be friends for a very long time. So if you know someone, you notice when they are like trying to change you know, like uh, changing in order to match your liking. If she likes that man, you trying to copy this man's style in order to like get her attention, it's not going to work. She's still going to choose the other guy because she knows that you're just doing that in order to get her attention. It's not who you are. And it won't be ever as much as you try because you are not that person. Sooner or later, the real liking, the real personality comes out and then... You will have problems in the relationship because you haven't been yourself to begin with. You shouldn't have to change. 
And I kind of feel bad for Dr. Wandi because he kind of suggested it, but it was like more jokingly because he noticed that Yoyak actually likes Tam. So he was like, yeah, make a move. But he doesn't actually want Yoyak to make a move on her because he likes him. But you're making him hot, sir. That's like the problem. So technically, you are not good for him. Because you care about him. He's like, God damn it, you're so stupid. You suck him up. Yeah. That means stop the fake relationship. <laughs> Why? You want to kiss him, bitch? You actually feel the desire to kiss him and you push him off, bitch. Are you for real? No. No. I'm sorry, I don't know how it works in Dr. Ter's world, but when I have a partner, I don't visit the partner when they are working. I don't visit them in their working hours. They won't have time for me. They will literally have to send me away. I will visit my partner when I know that he's free to talk. When I know he's free so that we can have a nice little moment together. If everyone in that hospital has, the bre has a break at the same time, then that's not my fault. I don't know how it works in Dr. Ter's world. But when I have a partner, I want to talk to them. I want to be around them. And I can be with them and have a nice little moment with them alone if they are working. I can't be with my partner while that person is working. I need to visit them when they're free. That means when he's on break. So if you had that break, that's not my fault, bitch. Like, what does that have to do with you? But in general, like, to a specific degree, I mean... Dr. Wandi kind of made it obvious that this is, like, a for Dr. Turn and everything, like, making him all special and everything. But if you guys ask me, I think Dr. Turn is thinking a little too much of himself. For the fact that he don't really like Dr. Wandi like that, he is upset because of the fact that this man is in a relationship and even if it would be a fake relationship like that's his business if i want people to stop terrorizing me and to say yeah you will never have a partner just like to put an example out there and that's my business what are you talking about he's literally making it seem like this is all just for him <laughs> i mean to a specific degree like i said it is true but in general don't take yourself so important don't take yourself so important. Maybe it's just because of me, because I have a low self-esteem or like just not that high of a self-esteem, like a Karen, for example. But this man has way too much self-esteem. He thinks too much of himself. I would be smacking it right back at his face. Who are you to believe that everything I'm doing is for you? Like they are living in the same building. And if I take my partner with me and he's staying at my apartment, I know that sooner or later you will see him. That's a normal thing. It's not like he's uh, living somewhere else. They're making this huge ass shortcut or something so that Dr. Tu is actually seeing him with Dr. Wandi. They're living in the same, I don't know, is that a condo? Apparently it is. They're living in the same space, just at a different corridor. Sooner or later, Dr. Tu would see Dr. Wandi with Yuyak. I, he's making it seem like uh, Dr. Wandi is doing this on purpose, as if he would know this man's schedule. I mean, we couldn't put it past Dr. Wandi that he would actually know when this man is free, when this man is working out or not. But he's, like I said, Dr. Tu is thinking too much of himself. Goodbye. Hands off the property. Hands Need off the property. Huh? Sir, you just said that so that he would give up on the scholarship. You don't like him like that? No, you weren't. You said you like women? He's actually playing him. I hate him. I hate him. You're just doing that so that he gives up on the scholarship. You don't like him like that. He asked you in the first episode. You said you like women. He's a guy. And now you're saying wait for me a little bit more. I was confused. Oh, he's just looking into your eyes, sir. He's mesmerized. 
the way his、uh, smile dropped as well because the tension started to rise. Like this is not just pretending anymore. Yet you don't want him to kiss you, huh? He's gonna get up.、Mm, this man, I could smack him. They were both feeling it. They were both feeling the electricity, the tension rising up between them. They both wanted it, and he got up. I don't understand who he's waiting for. He noticed that Doctor Tu is manipulative, and that he would never go back to him. You, I mean, so like I sense they're cooking. I kind of like the way that <laughs> Yo Yak's brother is looking at them. He's like, I'll let my younger brother cook. I'll allow him to cook a little. Let him figure out his feelings. Love, how can I be nice? Don't be asking. <laughs> you don't want to ask that. Uh huh. He's like, do you just tap it into a dangerous territory? I love it. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But we want to finish it. Because it's the feeling of one person. Stop. I don't know. His mother wanted him to graduate. I'm sad. She would be proud. You're determined. Of course. You're dedicated. Oh, I love that. See, I did say. Is he studying to This man actually seems like he's jealous, sir. You lost your shot. Drop it. What has him having a boyfriend have to do with his professional image? Don't tell me you're also one of those homophobic people just because you didn't get the man. I hope you don't get hurt because. He's acting like a boyfriend.、Oh, I can't. I can't. This man is in love. Look at this man. He's just like tell me how much you love him. He's upset now. <laughs> While you're the future boyfriend. He's like, I thought we're close. Close enough now. <laughs> now he's not upset anymore. They're both friends. I'm sorry. Like you don't get upset when someone says something like this. Please take that virus. <laughs> Try to hide. He's trying to hide from all the people. I can't, sir. Round up. Next, you Yo Yak Pede Suka. He's like, don't look at me. He is here, sir. Get up. Get your ass up. I was gonna say, if this man is there, Kun Yo Yak, I'm in the back. Literally behind him. No, he ain't. He was gonna zoom out. He's like, where are you going? I'm gonna push you into the room. All three injections. Why does only Yoyak have to do it? He's not the only one there giving all his input. I cannot believe that they ended the episode like this. I'm actually shook. I don't know what to do and what is with that little side story at the end that only Yoyak had to take that shot. What about Doctor Wandi? Isn't he also participating in the sexual activities? Why is only Yoyak the one that needs to take that? 
I would have forced Dr. Wani to take the shot with me. Like, if you force me to do it in order, like, to protect myself from STDs, then you also have to take that damn shot. Not just me. God damn it. <laughs> no matter. I just want for Dr. Wani to allow Yuyak to kiss him. I hate the fact that he keeps on moving away. Like, hello, who are you waiting for? For the Lord of saving grace, like, who are you waiting for so that you can finally lose your <laughs> mouth virginity? Like, he lost his virginity ages ago, but he's not gonna lose his mouth virginity. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I can't even imagine how someone is supposed to have sex with someone without kissing them. Like, I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. It would be way too awkward for me. Like, just my neck and my upper body, like, no. I want to kiss them as well, like, I don't know how he's imagining sex to be like, but no matter, no matter, what can we do, it's like Dr. Wandi's strange mind, and him not accepting that he has feelings for them, but this is like a struggle, because both of them are doing the same thing, so they're literally made for each other, we will see what next episode is gonna be like, we do know that the sneak peeks for the next episodes are always leading us to believe something, and... When we actually watch the episode, we see how delusional we were, hoping that finally the story is moving along. No, we're still trapped in the delusion that Yoyak and Dr. Wandi put themselves in. But we will see. I hope you enjoyed this video with me. Tell me in the comments below what you think was best, and I will see you in another video.